Go ahead. You know what makes it better than shit? It's liquid, so it gets a little bit of that sloshing, you know? Mm. Mm. I want our audience to try to guess what that is. Oh, yeah, good point. Well, I gave a little bit away, but I don't know. You gave gave the consistency away, but... Yeah, but again, there was sloshing, so... Yeah. I think it was just part of it. This is the Experience Podcast with me and someone else. It's Nathaniel. Yeah, he's back. Um, we're, we're, we're here. Back. Yeah. Oh, you, were, you were on recently, I think. I mm-hmm. Maybe a few weeks Did ago. we ever do like a post-Super Bowl? Actually, I don't remember. Uh, I want to say we talked about it. Did we? Yeah, I do. Uh, I do too. Independent of if it happened or not, I just want to say that. You know, the desi- the desire is there. Okay. I mean, you can start talking about it while I try to figure out if we've already done this. No. If we, why would we talk about it if we've already done it? I feel like knowing what we talked about is a prerequisite yes. to talking about it. It smells like bacon in my apartment. I do not eat bacon. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think you do do bacon. No, I haven't had bacon in a long time. The last time you were on was our Super Bowl preview. Hmm. We have not talked about it. All right. Well, uh, I wish the Bengals won. It's a good Super Bowl though. Oh, yeah. It sounds like it was so long ago. Um, yeah, let's oh, just skip ahead. So uh, March Madness. Who we got? <laughs> what are we thinking? Oh, jeez. March Madness is so hard. I'm going to pick Duke to go to the Final Four and then lose. Unless they play sounds right. Gonzaga. Not into Gonzaga? I, I'm going to pick Gonzaga to go to the Final Four and lose. Mm. That seems right. I feel like they don't have the, like last year, because, you know, that was kind of, that, that's always been their thing, make it to the final four and lose. And then they finally made it to the finals as like heavy favorites last year and then lost to Baylor. So I just feel like that this is more of like a letdown spot. I don't think it like reignited a fire because, um, they just had like a, a long history of like not doing well in the final four. So they finally got to the championship and then it was like, fuck, we still couldn't do it even though we got one game closer, but it doesn't feel like a progression thing. I just feel like they're going to be back to their old ways. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I, I don't know. No one really knows. No, yeah. That's the whole point of it. <laughs> um, I don't know what else. Like Auburn is kind of interesting, but I don't really see it. I, I I don't know. Oh, that's a good point. I don't think Kansas. Because okay, not one seeds that could make the final four. I'm thinking maybe Duke and Nova. I was gonna say Duke. Yeah, I don't know if it's probably a safe bet. I don't know. Oh, oh, wait. I can't remember if we had talked about this in the past, but uh, tip for everybody out there. If you got to make a bracket, but you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Here's how you make a relatively consistent bracket. You There's a website, and I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's not too hard to find. It has the historical win percentages based on seed matchups. So whatever you pick, just have your seed matchup percentages like balance out. So 
just like example, let's say that four seeds beat 13 seeds 75% of the time. Find a 13 seed that you like the most, pick them to win, and all the other four seeds win. And if you just balance out the percentages every year, I'm not saying that you're like going to win. This isn't some like crazy hack, but you won't be sitting at the end of the first round and be like, shit, like my bracket sucks. Like everyone else's is way better. You're guaranteed to like have a few good calls that guarantee you like some good spots and like through at least the elite eight. But once you get to like picking the final four and stuff, which is where most of the points are anyway, it's all just a crapshoot regardless. So. Anyway, that's my that's my tip for doing well in like the first three rounds. Tip for success. Yeah, it, low variance, right? Like your bracket's not going to be garbage. I'll be like, oh, okay, like you know, that wasn't that wasn't so bad. Well, yeah, the whole point is to minimize variance for your bracket, at least in the early the early rounds of the tournament. So you get to mm. maybe like lead eight and then. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, the bracket's not out yet. It comes out on Monday, right? Selection Sunday, yeah. So Monday. Um, I I hope I can have another great call this year because last year I picked uh, I can't even fucking remember. Oh wait, Oren, the 15 seed that beat Ohio State. Dude. Yeah. Do you remember what I'm talking about? That? Did you say that on here? Not on here, but last year I had oh. I, I I had two brackets, and in one of them, I had Ohio State the number two seed being upset by a 15 seed, and it happened on a buzzer beater, and mm -hmm. yeah, there at one point in time, I was uh like 0.7 percent of all brackets was were still perfect, and I had one of them, and you know. What team lost to break my perfect bracket? Uh, like it should be in the bottom left Texas. corner of your screen right now. What, what screen? Your screen. My screen? Yeah. Because <laughs> we're on blue jeans. I, I don't it was Georgia it. Tech. It was Georgia Tech. <laughs> Fucking losers! I can't believe it. I was so high after the ACC tournament win. Like, of course, of course they're gonna win this game. Although no, I guess of they're gonna lose. Not, not in the first rounds. I thought, I thought wow. they were gonna lose to Illinois, which and fucking Loyola end up beating Illinois anyway. So that, yeah, that Loyola was fucked. wasn't bad. Loyola, they kind of got screwed. Georgia Tech wasn't bad for in the first match. Yeah, they got screwed in their first matchup though. Yeah, well. I can't even remember the sentiment at the time. Did eight seed feel like a robbery? Is that is that the worst seed the ACC champion has ever had? Um, I don't know. I can't answer that question. Your first question, I think it was kind of expected in that range. Like they were supposed to be somewhere between six and ten. So like eight was fine, but the the bigger issue was like. The nine, they got a bad, you know, they got a really good nine seed. Mm. Like they could, they, they they would have been better off being a ten seed, getting, mm. you know, some similar seven seed. Did you watch I the? Was the that was the did you watch the Coach K suck fest? I did, did not watch that. It was awesome. I think was. I was, it was, it was awesome. Oh. Also, I think both ceremonies before and after were kind of cringe. I was watching in passing. I was at a game night with my friends, so I wasn't, like, locked in. But I also just hate Coach K, so maybe. Really? Yeah. Okay. He uh, made the whole season about him, which is lame. And I don't like when people say he served the Army. Because he was a basketball coach for the Army, and I don't know if that really... That's, like, all he did. I'm just saying. Well, so the, the Army needs several people, you know? Do you count, like, uh, the clerks in the Army as serving the Army? Yeah. Anything that is directly related to my safety as an American, 
I appreciate immensely. However, unfortunately, I don't view basketball as a part of that equation. So the military bans, no. What? The military bans. That's, that's a no? Oh, well, I, look. I'm just trying to think of, of the ancillary I, parts. I, I don't <laughs> know how warfare works now, but, you know, at, at, at one point in time, the drummer boys were like responsible for <laughs> signaling like battle formations and like tactics. I don't fight. Yeah, I, I know. Look, I'm no expert at modern warfare either, but I don't think it's two large groups lining up in a field uh, with rifles and then a drummer boy leading the way. Can you imagine a video of just like the Ukrainian? situation where it's like almost like revolutionary era garb <laughs> they're like banging away on their drum like you know like eastern the, europe the they got some crazy stuff over there you know i wouldn't put a pass uh what else do you want to talk about today we hit on march madness you know um, we, we'll, we'll probably have to wait until after the bracket comes out just because yeah, I was trying to do some pokers. <coughs> um, well, okay, just just going through for some extra stuff, right? Um, I think Providence is like a pretty easy, like one to pick for them to drop maybe earlier than their seed indicates because I mean, your record's your record. They've had a ton of close games and are like playing what seems to be kind of like at their Ceiling, which is what you need to do to win the NCAA tournament, to be fair. But it just feels like maybe once they hit the Sweet 16, they're kind of immediately in like in danger every round. Um, I think it's very possible they'll get be out before the Sweet 16. Yeah, it is possible. Like I, I think I think if you want to bounce them in the second round, that is not the worst decision to make in your bracket. Yeah, okay. I have to see who who they line up against, but uh, yeah. Second round feels like wager. Um, I know, I don't know if this is goofy, but I actually kind of am feeling Wisconsin. Is it goofy? I think, I think like Elite Eight lock, and then probably not taking them to go to the Final Four, but I don't even know. Like, I wouldn't fault anyone for doing that. It's going to depend who's in their bracket, like, for sure. But, I mean, yeah, I don't know. The 2-3 spot is weird because, like, they'll have to go through each other and then the one seed. So it's kind of the same. I don't know yeah. if that made sense. <laughs> but it no, I, I, I understood it. Maybe the audience won't, but I understood it. I understood what you're saying. Uh, Illinois is whatever they're at like 16 right now so what they'll be like a four or five seed probably uh whatever. yeah Ish. whatever yeah. no i'm gonna be honest it. who is murray state <laughs> why murray are state they is... 19 <laughs> murray state has been a good basketball team for a few years now Would you like to know where Murray State is? Can you guess the state that they're in? And it's not Murray. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right. Mur where Murray's is Murray state. state? Let me think. Murray's the city, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Well, also, I see their logo. It looks yellow and green, which is making me think North Dakota. But that I don't know if that makes sense. The logo um, it should be navy and gold. Oh, it's navy and gold. Uh, it's very small. So, okay. Um, I can give you another hint that'll no, no, pretty much give it away. It. Yeah, well, it'll I'm pretty gonna... much give it away. But uh, I, I don't want to take too long. But I just want to. I want to give it my all. You know, Murray. Let's, uh, so while you're thinking, no, no, I'm going to no, give no, you some no. other facts. No, 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 other facts. So the team has made the the tournament uh -huh. in 2018, 2019. 
obviously there was no 2020. So they've been relevant recently. Mm. Um, in 2019, they did make it. They did win the first round. Um, and those two years, 2018 and 2019, they did win their conference. So, you know, conference they're in is, uh, well, I won't say. So what do you got? Brutal. I'm going through all these states, and I'm just like, uh, um, I'll Murray State. The, they're the racers. Racers. The racers. Yeah, like, um, like a race. Would you like to know the conference they're in? It no. probably won't give it away. It probably won't. You probably won't. It won't really help. I'm just gonna fucking say Montana. No, we're gonna keep going until you get it. So the conference they're in what? is the. Open. No, I'm done. The, I'm done. The, <laughs> Is the Ohio Valley Conference? Wait, are are they? It, oh, well, I'm gonna assume it's not Ohio, because you said I wouldn't get it. I don't know if you're being sarcastic. Ohio, is it Ohio? Is not, there's no schools in Ohio in the Ohio Valley Conference. Oh shit. Okay, uh, Illinois. No. Uh, Iowa. No. No. <sighs> This gets, has me really intrigued by the Ohio Valley Conference because, again, there's no Ohio schools. Ohio's, like, not even close to being in this conference. This, this, there's only four states in this conference. I had a map of the U.S. Is You're it a Dakota? It's, no. All right. Are you Ohio up? Valley. All right. It's well, Kentucky. I don't know. It's not that far away. Oh, really? Murray, Kentucky. The, the, the big hint that would have given it away is the logo has a horse, like a guy racing on a horse. Oh, I get it. That's cute. Yeah. Yeah. See? Uh, anyway, like I said, they've been moderately relevant the past few years. So, um, yeah, they did win their conference in 2020, but obviously there was no um, – Tournament, and I don't think they had a conference tournament that year either. So they, because showing they won the regular season, but not the, mm-hmm. or maybe they lost in the championship, the tournament championship. But they were the best in the in the regular season. Anyway, so one of the best Ohio Valley conference teams. Again, the the states in the Ohio Valley are Missouri, Kentucky, Illinois, and Tennessee, as you would have guessed. <laughs> um, well, hey, I feel good for picking Illinois. I, I gave myself. It's a, a shot. public school. Founded in 1922. About 10,000 people enrolled. Yeah, Murray State. Yeah. Texas so. Tech and Arkansas feel like teams that <clears throat> will beat worse seeds and lose to better seeds. Like, strictly. Like, they just are what they are. We'll beat, so what you say? We'll beat worse seeds and we'll lose to better seeds? Is that what you said? Like what? Like what do you three expect? For the opposite. Like like if or they're the like a three seed, they will beat everyone until they run into the two, and then they will lose. Them. Okay, yeah. Wasn't sure if you said it the opposite way. No, no, that'd be that'd be buck wild. That would mean they would lose immediately. <laughs> yeah. That's what I asked. Wasn't Purdue like uh, really good earlier in the year? They were. That's why I was like, maybe they'll they'll recapture that. I don't know. I don't know. They were weren't they number one for a while. I don't know. Te- I didn't know Tennessee was that good either. Oh, they beat Auburn. Yeah. And Kentucky. Oh, my God. All right. I'm sold on Tennessee. Tennessee? Elite Eight. Lock. <laughs> All right. Lock it in. Can I have more than eight Elite Eight locks? <laughs> yeah, twenty. Just put right. sixty-four in there. How could I be wrong? Yeah. Oh, uh, baseball's back. Congrats, your baseball is back. We'll stay alive another year. <laughs> Famously, just got reactivated a couple of days. You know, the day of. Um, I don't know. We're back, and we are. We are back. From what I understand. The deal is still very owner friendly. I don't care about the deal. <clears throat> Let's talk about baseball. I just so happened to be in Chicago on April seventh, which is the new opening day. 
So yeah. I'm going to keep an eye out and try to snag a Cubs opening day ticket for cheap as the date approaches. I was going to say, it's going to be expensive, probably. And it's going to yeah, be it cold. In April? Cold. It's, cold. it's cold in the northern cities in baseball. Chicago weather now. Oh, it is 31 degrees. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, will be, it, hope, it probably won't be 31, but it's going to be like 45, 50. I mean, it'll be officially spring by then. So it won't be winter. So By the, the rules of the calendar, it will be spring. Mm-hmm. But on Official. April 7th, there's a, there's a chance that there's always a chance of snow. We, we, we all have passed the equinox. What are your thoughts on uh, daylight saving time coming up? Coming up to... What are my thoughts about it? Does it always <laughs> – no, yeah, it always happens Saturday to Sunday time. Yeah. Like, right? Yeah. Saturday night, Sunday morning-ish. So, so you, either, you either lose or you regain the hour between 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. You lose that hour, huh? So this is so in the spring you lose the hour in the fall – you get a second try at it. And that that's because that was deemed like the most useless hour in the day. That's why it's that hour. Yeah, I guess so. Hard to go wrong in that time zone, right? I, I, personally, I would vote three to four. Three or four, really? Yeah. A, a lot of things, like four, I feel like you're starting your morning now, you know, or like there's potential. I mean, that's... You're turning, you're turning Insane. around now. Well, you know, when you when you have to go to work at five. Yeah, but on the flip side of that, when you know I'm out having a great time with the boys, I feel like it's very easy to accidentally be up at two. Oh, dude, you're preaching the choir. I'm up at two all the time, but. <laughs> so, uh, like it's really weird because I I'm working nights during daylight saving time, so it's technically an 11 hour shift instead of a normal 12. You're working nights during daylight savings. Uh, yeah. So I working. mean, you're not really saving any light. Well, no. Well, I am. I'm I'm working at the plant to provide light from the sun. Well. Is that what light. is that what nuclear power is? Nuclear power keeps the lights on. Um, no, I I'm just saying it's weird because like we'll be doing we'll be doing something out in the field and it's like all of a sudden why is this job taking two hours? Well, because we lost an hour. Whips, you got it. And no one else has a good grasp of time, so. Well, just because like everything we do is logged by time. Mm-hmm. Do that's what I'm getting at. So nothing will be logged between two and three o'clock. Yeah, do you get paid for the hour? Apparently we do not, which is fair because we're not there for twelve hours. We're there for eleven. But well, the hour that huh? Let's look at the start and the end time. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you do still start and end six and mm -hmm. six, but you are physically there for eleven hours. Like if they run the card reader. When you want, when you walk in the building, mm -hmm. and then that you know, and then when they when you exit, it'll clock in at eleven. Yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying, but it's all subjective, right? Like, what if the timer just like ran at like twelve eleven speed <laughs> compared to a normal second? Then it would show twelve. So I would say this whole thing's pretty subjective. And you should get paid I, I don't really care hours. because, again, in the fall, you get paid for 13 hours. So, you know, it's cancels out. Yeah. Wait, I just got confused about what I was even arguing. I don't because, know really what you're arguing either. Wait, when it's 2 o'clock, is it going to skip to 3? Yes. It, it goes Oh, so you would be getting paid less. That's what I'm saying. If you went, oh, oh. But in the no, fall, I, I you get paid. You get paid extra for like working when the change happens. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for the mental stress of having to deal with yeah, that. Yeah, it's disorienting, I imagine. 
I've never it's had not disorienting. I've, 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 I've been on nights the past two weeks and I'll be on nights the next three Look, weeks. Like, don't sell yourself short, okay? It'll be in hours. Whatever. You know. It, no, it's okay that my boss yells at me. You know, it's part of the job. Don't yeah. do not do that, you know? It's not my okay you're working when the shift happens. You know, you got to acknowledge the mental strain. But yes, it, it goes 159 in, in 59 seconds and then it immediately goes to 3 o'clock. The next second. Fast hour. 2 a.m. Doesn't exist. Never heard of her. Yeah, doesn't exist. All right. We talked about football for 10 seconds. <laughs> Got a I little like saving insane. time for five hours. I don't care about the NBA anymore. I'll just say that. I'll watch wow. the playoffs, but who cares? Are the Hawks even in the playoffs right now? They should. Ooh. I kind of don't think so. They low-key fucked up in the middle of the season. They were still in it. See. I th- no, no, they're definitely in the hunt. But I don't... Oh, wait. Also, there's 10 teams now? When I say I'm watching the playoffs, that it does not include the, like, play-in games. <laughs> I'm not watching okay. that shit. That's right, now, yeah, right now, they're the 10th seed. Um, not doing too well lately. Well, they've kind of right at the ship. I don't know. The bigger news is obviously the Lakers. But... Whatever. I don't... Oh, my God. All right. So we did that. Um, uh, I just have to throw in there. The the reason why I want the Hawks to make the playoffs is because then I'll actually watch their games, and I love watching Gallinari. He is, he is my favorite basketball player, maybe of all time. Steve Nash is up there, but... You know, Steve Nash, Gallinari, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gallinari has uh, a confidence that is just something we should all aspire to. When he steps on the basketball court, not when the game starts, because he's not a starter, mind you, but when he does get that time, he believes he is the greatest human to ever touch a basketball. And I wish I had that confidence. If he does not get double teamed and he touches the ball, my man's shooting the ball. 10 times out of 10. You know, he's got to be a team player when he gets double teams. And then uh, he's also just a goofy, oafy dude. He will he will make an insane block on one end and then airball three immediately afterwards. I love it. It makes no sense. He plays with unfaltering confidence. It's incredible to watch. Truly a lesson bigger than sports. All right, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, so that's why I want the Hawks to make the playoffs. <laughs> just, just for him. Yeah, and you know what? He's earned it. Get that man around. It's been a while. It's surprising. I feel like he's thirty-three. Uh, okay, that's the Gallinari segment. Thank you. Uh, anything else you wanted to hit on? No, no, I didn't really come prepped this time. Hmm. I had a long week Friday. Long week? Teaching well, the I pupils? Mean, or? I guess every week is 168 hours. Well, I'll, oh, except this week. 167. Exactly. Yeah, so, uh, but... Is it this week or is it next week? Yeah, I don't know. What's the What's the week for you? Are you a Monday to Sunday? Or are you a Sunday to Saturday? Sunday I'm a, to Sunday? I'm a sunset guy, no doubt about it. Sunset. Okay. Yeah, I like to I like to start my week with <laughs> skipping church. <laughs> with church. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, that'll be interesting when I move, which is inevitable. Um, we'll we'll see how that goes because um. I just don't, uh, I don't like, I have not found a church that is a good fit for me in Atlanta. Not greater Atlanta. Mm. Talking about like Atlanta around. So that's why I never went. When I lived in Cincinnati uh, one summer, the first church that I gave a shot, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Perfect. And I went every week that I lived there. When I wasn't out of town for work. So, 
yeah, when I move, we'll see. I was I was gonna start. I was gonna check out Atlanta churches again to like see what was up. You know, just do my due diligence. And then COVID happened. Fun fact. Hmm. Obviously, this is a long time ago now, like two years ago. But yeah. true story. You can still do an online church. No. I'm no, not interested not in it. You got to feel the blessings. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You got to be able like to that. feel Jesus in you when you're there. Yeah, I don't know if that's exactly it. Um, I think that's it. You know, I don't know. that it, you're, you're bringing up a good point. It doesn't make sense. But neither does organized religion. So I'm just going to oh, roll with it. Well, there. It's a whole other thing. Yeah. Well, my mom's a minister, or was. She agrees, so I can I can say that. Uh, okay. Church segment done. Uh, long week. Why don't you fucking contribute, huh? What? No. I'm, I'm, Why don't you go to church? I, I was raised Jewish. Why don't you go to synagogue? <laughs> I don't even think there is. There's probably one in the city. Uh-huh. I have. I've never seen it. Yeah, I agree. It'd probably be something you have to like look up. Like, yeah. You don't just really stumble upon it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can't just drive out on the corner and find find one. Like there can't be more than like a hundred Jews in the city. It's only like eighteen thousand people total. Yeah. So proportionally, what would that be? And they're all a certain type of people, too. Jewish? Mm. <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of people who look like me, so I'll get it. Uh, so, yeah, what did you have this week that was so long, even though it's a shorter week? Oh, I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> Just gassed, you know. One yeah. thing I'll say that's like relevance, maybe like a, a good mental framework for someone who needs to hear it is like, so, you know, I, I go through this whole process of like studying and then applying to schools, all this stuff. And now I'm at the point where I'm not really waiting on any more. Well, I am waiting on some stuff, but not so much that it's like overwhelming. Like, I could pretty easily map out, like, all the scenarios that could occur and make a flow chart of, like, okay, here's what's going to happen if, you know, X, Y, Z happens. And also, I've submitted everything I'm going to submit that directly impacts my decision for being admitted. Like, I might have to throw in some financial aid stuff, but, you know, in terms of things that get me into schools, it's all 100% in. And yet, like mentally, I just haven't caught up to that because it's been a long journey. It's been like nine, eight, nine months of just like grinding all this. So, yeah, I'm trying to start, you know, reaching out to people, find ways to hang out, do more stuff that I wasn't doing before. Um, But this transition has been not super smooth because I think it's just hard to be in a certain mindset and like a certain type of way for almost a year and then snap your fingers and and go back to what it once was. So I think that is also part of why it's just been exhausting because I'm I'm trying to kind of, you know, transition my life back to normalcy, if you will, for six months and then it'll change again. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then it'll probably change again in a couple of years after that. Approximately three, yeah. Yeah. But I, I think three years is, like, a lot. That's that's a good amount. You know, I realized, uh, uh, well, this is true a while ago, but, like, the apartment I'm living in now, this is the longest amount of time I've, like, lived in one spot since... Before college. 
You've been but, there like a year and a half. Is that right? Uh, let's see. I moved two, in October two and 2019. Two and a half. Two and a half years. Yeah. And like that's probably true for you as well, right? The place that I'm in right now. Mm-hmm. In college, I had an apartment for um, three years. Well, time out. I know it's cheaper, but like, did you live there in the summers? Yeah, summer. So one summer, two summers. Uh, I want to. It's one or two summers that that I was there. I want to say two. So it might have been two continuous years. But does that mean you like never had to move your stuff? Yes. Okay, that's crazy. Although, can I cheat here? Because one of the summers I had to move to a room upstairs. Mm. Same building, just like one floor up. That that's that counts as being continuous. Okay. Yeah. So I think it was two. Two floors. No, one floor. I don't know. I don't. If it was two. Yeah. A lot of distance. I think it was. That was a lot of work because I had to move like because I was like. Well, it's not worth like packing everything up into you know huge boxes. But but it was. Then, what is it? What it should it should have been because I I moved everything <laughs> kind of individually <laughs> up the elevator for like all day. Yeah, yeah, that's mm. like um, uh, <laughs> one time uh, I was like prepping for a party and I just like had my groceries on the counter and. It wasn't like far, far away, but it wasn't close to the fridge door either. And I had like 36 rack of beer or whatever. And I was like loading them into the fridge. And I was like walking to the like beers that I bought to pick up like three or four and then going to the fridge every time. And my friend was like, I got like halfway through and my friend was like, why don't you just pick up the box and take it to the fridge and then put them in and i was like oh yeah that would have been a good idea because i just wasn't even thinking we were like having a conversation while it was happening so that's exactly what you did but with everything you own (laughs) i didn't want to i didn't want to unpack when i got there too right so Hmm. you know it was a weird a weird situation well i also think that is unfortunate i imagine how it played out because uh Imagine your room, like, uh, kind of being layered, right? Like, example, uh, I have items on a shelf. Well, if I bring the items upstairs, the shelf is not there yet. So I can't put them on the shelf because the shelf isn't there. And so it's kind of like, uh, like, uh, first in, first out or did i flip that no. fix it up all right I, first in last out i i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about i was just trying to connect it to something that people might know anyway it's fucking backwards right you gotta you gotta go in one direction to like pack the room and then the opposite direction to unpack it so i don't even think that really served you so well yeah i don't know I, I'm trying to remember what I did specifically. I like did the, pack up stuff. Just, like I did, uh, it's not like I was carrying, you know, pen, individual pencils in my hand as I was going. <laughs> you know, like, like I had some some small boxes and stuff, but like it was kind of like a half-ass packet is what I'm getting at. Hmm. I didn't go full on. You know, I was like, you know, oh whatever. I, like I didn't take the boxes up, stuff like that. You know. Related to this of good news, um, I believe we are now both old enough to hire movers. Like you always could, but but now we're at the age where it's like, yeah, that's just what we do now. Is that what? Is that a thing? What are, what are you talking about? No, it's not like a law, but it, it's just like <laughs> social convention. I think twenty five. Like, is this renting, is it, yeah, twenty-five like is the age where it's like. Oh, you just hire movers now. 
you don't try to like move all the stuff with like your dad or your friends because now it's like oh help me move i'll buy like pizza and beers that's like not worth it for our friends anymore I i've got some work friends who i child. feel like did that he did exactly that. that though huh i got some work friends that i feel like did exactly that when they moved <laughs> were they older than 25 yes <laughs> yikes Damn, there, there is nothing to fucking do over there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, movers. I, I, well, because everyone has, you know, trucks here, though, too. So it's different. Yeah. They're not moving in, in, in a Prius. They're moving in their Ford F-150. Yeah, yeah. It's a little different in, like, the city city. Yeah, this is, like, a rural area where everyone has a truck. So it's, like... Okay, you just move it yourself. Just a caravan of trucks. I mean, you're joking, but basically. No, I mean, I'm not joking. That sounds awesome, honestly. So, okay, didn't really consider that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to, like, get rid of as much stuff as I can. Um, But, like, I still want to have it while, like, I could use it. Like, example, I trying? don't want to sell my shelf right now because... Mm. I'm using that, and I would like to use it for as long as possible. So what do you think's the sweet spot for starting to, like, list stuff and try to get it gone? Like a month? I think it's, yeah, I was going to say a month, month and a half, maybe. Maybe, like, a month and a half, to be safe. You start, like, a week before a month, so five weeks out. It's just going to be so to awkward, because, like, what if I sell my mattress? Like, at the earlier end of that time, it's like, well, what the Why fuck? Why are you are selling you your mattress? That? You're not going to bring that? Potentially too, across the country? No. Too big? The too big? I don't know. Well, actually, I'm sad about it because um, it's a nice mattress. I kind of stole it. It was uh, like two mm. years old. I, I How old is it in, right now? Uh, uh, four. I got some good more years at it. That's what I'm saying. And it, it's nice taking good care of it. I moved into a place where the people who lived in the room before me were not like worried about it. They were like, ah, I'll just leave it there. So, but then I did not, I did not pass that along. You know, the thing where like people buy each other Starbucks in the drive through and then one person no, just, like, but... doesn't, and then they get it for free and the, the cycle ends. No, but sure. I, I understand uh, the concept. Okay. Yeah, it was like that, except it happened one time. I immediately ended it. I was like, this is mine now. So I replaced their very nice mattress with just, like, a shitty mattress that I had around. So whoever moved in after me, I'm sorry. Hmm. But it was simply too good of a deal. Very nice mattress. So I am sad to part ways, but I, I just think it'd be so much easier to, you know, move wherever I'm going to move. If I don't have to lug around like a fucking bed and like drawers and all this shit, like I'll just try to sell it here and then figure it out when I'm there. Um, you could sleep on an air mattress. Yeah, yeah, I could. Um, I could inflate the air mattress on my bed frame. I, I wasn't suggesting that, but you know, and keep the sheets that. on it. So it would look like if you just look in the room, you'd be like, yeah, this is normal. There's definitely not an air mattress under a comforter here. <laughs> no reason. There's no reason you can't do it. <laughs> I think that's a great idea, actually. Well, wait, are inflatable mattresses, like, regulation size? Like, can you get a queen size inflatable? Yes. I have a okay. raised queen size air mattress. You mm -hmm. wouldn't tell. You probably couldn't tell it was not. Oh, real wow. wow. My, if you my, dressed it up. I already have, I wouldn't say, like, back issues, but, like, sometimes my back bugs me. But this sounds like a terrible idea. Mm. Like, for me specifically, it just so happens because of that. Mm. Aside from Modern that caveat, excellent idea. Modern air matches are pretty good, though. So. If you could do it for, like, a week, I think you'd be fine. A week. I don't know. 
I just got like the big things are like dresser, bed. What what am I supposed to do with like the bed frame that my mattress is on? Because like I don't think it's really worth anything, but I also just don't want to like throw it away. Can't give it to someone. Who the, who the fuck wants that shit? Someone moving. I don't know. Yeah, I also don't want to like disassemble it. There's got to be someone moving out that you know of that will need a new bed frame. Got to be. Always people moving. Uh. Mm-hmm. I think that's good for the show. I think we talked enough about moving and selling items on online. If anyone's interested in products, Nathan, you got a plug for uh... the Atlanta area? No, just just hit me up. <laughs> but not now. Me. In like in like three months, right? Yeah, yeah. No, in, in two months. <laughs> two months. Two months from that. We'll hit you up in two months, because yeah. No, you can hit me up now. Just be like, put me in the Great. queue. For the oh, yeah, head frame. that's good. Yeah, like pre order. First dibs? Let me know if yeah, anything changes. Yeah. yeah, I'm like a well oiled supply chain machine. <laughs> I've got a lot of furniture that like I'm considering upgrading, and like I'm in the same boat. I'm like, what do I do with this stuff? It's probably not worth anything. Yeah, well, where'd you get it from? Where did I get it from? Yeah, like what tier of. Are we talking IKEA or are we talking William and Sonoma? Wayfair. Hmm. Bit of a grab bag. Yeah. Yeah. Could be anything. I, I would very call least, it a... Yeah. I was going to say, I would call it, like, my, my couch here, I would call it an upper low tier couch. Well, I think list it. And then, worst case scenario, I mean, you could probably get some, like, UR kids who were probably like oh I'll stick a couch or something right oh I'll stick a couch is that how they talk how the kids talk <laughs> I mean that's probably what I would have that's, said we have like three couches in our living room when I lived Jeez. in Hempel it was dank alright um, thanks for coming on 